Welcome to another video. In this video, I am going to show you how you can run a MySQL database server on a remote machine using Docker. Okay, so we're going to have a, a, a MySQL server running and we'll be able to connect to it using our, our laptops uh, locally. So the few things we're going to use. First, we're going to get a server from DigitalOcean. You can use any other option to get a server. You just need some Ubuntu server or a CentOS server. Then we are going to install Docker on it. Then we are going to run a MySQL container using Docker on that machine. Then we are going to connect to that uh, using Workbench from our machine, from our local machine. So four different steps and you will have a fully, fully ready MySQL server that you can practice SQL in. You still have to load data. Um, I'll link a bunch of videos on how to load sample data because you need data to be able to practice, right? The server by itself is no good if there's no data in it. But that is out of context for this video. So I'll link other videos. If you're new to my channel, my name is Armas Kunfu. All I do is teach beginners QA automation, Python, SQL, uh, basically anything really related to um, automation. So subscribe to the channel. You learn a lot from the content that I create. And for this particular tutorial, you can watch the video, but the video moves a little fast. So I'm also preparing a written tutorial and I will link it in the description. So go to the description, click on the link, and that will take you to uh, my website. And on my website, there is a reference and cheat sheet section. I am gonna put it here, okay? My SQL remote, something like that. But I'm gonna give you a direct link in the description. That way you can be, you'll be able to look at screenshots and follow it step by step in addition to this video. So uh, check that out. The first thing we need to do is get our server, okay? In the digital ocean world, they call it a droplet. So we are going to get a droplet. Again, use any provider you want to get a droplet. This droplet is gonna cost $6 a month, but if you use my referral, referral link, I can't say that word, um, you can use it for two months for free. It's up to you. So I'm gonna click on create. This is gonna be one of the simplest steps. Click on create, choose anything that's close to you. Sometimes it goes closer to me and also pay attention to the price down here. You want to get the cheapest possible. I'm going to leave it as Ubuntu. I'm going to leave it as the latest. I'm going to leave it as basic. Then I'm going to select this as regular. By default, they have premium selected. I'm going to do regular. Then I'm going to click on $6 a month. That's the one I want. It's a very small server, but that's good enough for us. Then I am going to use a password here. Okay. Let's see, hopefully I got right. In fact, I'm going to write down my password so that I don't mess it up. Let's see, I'm going to copy paste it here because this is the password you're going to need to connect to the server. I could have selected SSH, but you guys might not have SSH set up. So I'm going to do password so you'll be able to do everything I'm doing. So once the server is created, we need to log in into the server. And this is the password we are going to use. We can log into the server using the UI, using DigitalOcean, web, the website itself, but I'm going to do it in, in the terminal. That's probably better. Okay, then I am going to say, this is the name, MySQL Remote Demo. This is just a name. You can give it any name you want and leave everything else as blank. I'm going to say create droplet and droplet is going to be created. Once the droplet is created, we'll get the IP address and we'll be able to access it. Meanwhile, let's work on our Docker command. So if you search for Docker Hub, right? Once you get into Docker Hub, you can search for MySQL, MySQL. Okay, so we're gonna use the official MySQL image. You kind of gotta know how to work with Docker, but even if you don't really, you can follow along because this is the exact same step. Okay, so once we get here, um, let's see, they should have tutorial here. They have example command. Let's take the first example command, the very simple one. All right, and I'm gonna modify it. You have to modify it. Okay, they assume you're using everything default and things like that. So I'm gonna just um, put it, paste it into my notes. Let me make this bigger. I'm just gonna post, paste it into my notes. So Docker run, that's always gonna be the name. Some MySQL, I'm gonna say MySQL demo. This is the name of the container. MySQL demo, all right? This is the root password. So when you connect to a MySQL server, you got to use a root password, right? A, a root user, you already have a root user and you need a password for that. So you're going to come up with 
uh, a password for this one. I'm going to say super secret for root, right? That's, a, that's not even a good password at all, but I'm going to delete this server. Do not use password. I have a video uh, about uh, showing you how quickly you will get hacked if you use the word password. Your database gets hacked like that. I'll link a, uh, a link. I'll link a. Uh, I'll link a video to this video showing you uh, that one where where I show how to get hacked. That you get hacked actually. I can't speak today for some reason. All right. So uh, we're going to set that. Uh, we, D means run in the background. The the tag we want to use eight point two whatever the latest one is. Let's see. Oh, they got nine. We don't. We don't want nine. That's totally new. Eight point zero. We're just going to use eight point zero. So something that this is missing. If you run it this way, you cannot access it from the outside. So we got to add one more thing. Dash p for port. We can use three three. Uh, let's say say three three zero seven, and the inside is three three zero six. We can use three three zero six on the outside also, but. On your laptop, you might be using 3306 already for something else. So I'm just going to use 3307. I believe this are what we need to do. Okay, so let's hold on. Uh, we're going to need that eventually. Let's see if our server is ready. Our server is ready. We're going to copy the IP address. I can actually click it and I can uh, open the I can open the terminal here if I want, but I'm just going to connect to it from my uh, terminal here. In fact, let me do it here because everybody can do that. Even if you're not comfortable with the terminal, you can open this terminal here if you don't want to use your own, okay? So this will automatically connect. It, you don't even need to put in the password. So this is the server. I'm connected to the server. So if I do Docker dash dash version, it says Docker is not available and you can install it like that. I'm going to copy this, paste it, and that's going to install Docker. I'm going to put yes for Y for yes. And this is going to basically install Docker. And we're going to wait for this to finish because we need Docker to run the database. All right. So almost there. There you go. So if I do Docker dash dash version, now Docker is actually installed. Okay. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Actually, I can. Let me make. Make it a little better for you to see. There you go. Okay. So I wonder if I can clear this. Probably not. I can clear with a command. There you go. Now we can run our command. This is our command that's actually going to run the container. There you go. This port mapping is really, really important. Okay, guys. So right now it's downloading or pulling the docker image it needs to run it needs an image to run a container so it's pulling the image once it's finished pulling the image um it would run the container okay so i'm hoping i didn't miss anything here it doesn't look like it it's finished so i can do docker ps to see a running container there you go it is running and this port is exposed okay so now let's connect to it. at this time we already have our, our database server running Okay, so I am going to try to connect to it. I'm going to open Workbench. I'm going to click on this plus icon for new connection. I'm going to say remote MySQL demo. This is just a name. As you can see, I have tons of connections and each connection has a name. Uh, what is the host? The host is going to be our IP address. What is our IP address? We can get it from our dro droplet right here. This is our IP address. What user are we going to use? We're going to use root. What port? We exposed, if we look at our command, we exposed 3307. This 3306, we cannot change that. That's inside the container. MySQL is always listening with 3306. 3307 is what we run our container. So we're gonna do 3307, all right? Then we click on test connection and it's gonna ask for a password. Password for who? For root. So we're gonna get this password. This is the password we used for root. Paste that, click okay. Click OK, click OK, and there you go. If the connection didn't work, we would have got an error by now. Then you click on this, and voila, we are connected. There is this database, the sys database, that's like a built-in database, and we can create a database here. We can say, uh, we can say, create database foobar. 
there you go. If we refresh, we can click on this to refresh. There is a new database called FUBAR. So we have a MySQL database running and we're able to connect to it from, uh, from the outside, from basically our local machine. That's pretty much, that's all you need. But sometimes, so I wanna show you how to fix it if, if it gets stuck. So especially this server is pretty small and if you're using it heavily, or if you have a lot of people connecting to it, you run out of memory, you run out of connections and things like that. So sometimes you have to restart it. So what happens is uh, when you come here, let's say in, in a week and you click this to connect and you get an error. Uh, well, you need a password. If I saved it, I don't need a password. I'll show you real quick again. If I click this, if I click on this save password to keychain and the next time it's not gonna ask me for a password. So what happened is when you click on this, what happens is when you click on it, it will freeze up, like nothing happens. It will kind of get stuck. So you would go back and you connect to the remote machine, just like you did before. Then you see the Docker uh, running and you can restart it. You can do Docker restart and the image name, uh, the container name or the ID. You can do the ID. Hit enter and you will, this will restart it. In fact, here we could add one more command. So always restart, dash dash, restart always. Actually, that is pretty important. The first time we run it, we have to run that because the server can go down. When the server goes down and starts up, you want the Docker to also start up. So you want this command. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna stop this container. Uh, I'm gonna do Docker stop, take the ID. I could, I just wanna show you two different things. I can use the container name or the ID. Oh, I'm using the container name. There you go, let it stop. Once it's stopped, we wanna remove it so we can use the same name. It's taken a little bit of time to stop. That's typical because it's shutting down gracefully. So it takes a little bit of time. So now we're going to do Docker remove RM so I can remove the container. Now I'm going to take this command and I'm going to run it again. Oops. There you go. It's the same exact command except I added this restart always. So whenever something goes down, it will basically automatically restart. That, that's pretty important. I missed that on the first one. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do, Docker restart. So now every step I did, I'm gonna write it down, right? So you watch the video, you kind of understand what's going on, but it's a little bit easier, uh, fast and hard to follow. Watch, uh, do the written tutorial. Just follow the written tutorial step by step and you should be able to actually have a MySQL server running in less than like 10 minutes, right? You saw how long it took, not, not very long, all right? That's what I have for you in this video. Hopefully you find it helpful. And uh, once you have the database, of course you have to load data into it. And I'll link up videos. I already have videos how to link to load several different uh, sample databases into your database server. And I'll uh, give you the information about that, all right? Let me know if you have any issues, uh, put a comment, and I'll be very happy to respond to your comments.